Um, so I'm uh, I'm Helen. I'm from Inclusion Europe, and I'm be moderating this uh, session. So for this session uh, on um, uh, positive attitudes and policy for inclusive uh, education, we'll have the experience from Bulgaria and from Portugal with um, Paulina Petrova and Petia Varsheva. I'm sorry, I'm not sure I'm saying the names properly, so don't What's hesitate. Lost? It's okay. <laughs> uh, both from NARIT, the National Association of Resource Teachers, and then there will also be Vanessa Nevis and Rute Miro from uh, CECD Mira Sintra. Um. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So the first um, question we have, I also perhaps, yeah, you can activate the subtitles as you see on the PowerPoint. And there's also a translation. So I think it's being translated at the moment, normally it should be. Um, and don't hesitate to ask your questions in the Q&A. Um, there's a Q&A button and otherwise in the chat box, I'll be looking at those. So the first question we have um, is for Narit. So, uh, both of you uh, decide who wants to answer. It's about the methodology of the trainings and how did you conduct the trainings? Maybe I will start uh, because I'm a coordinator of the projects and programs in the National Association of Resource Teachers. Uh, my name is Paulina Petrova and I'm responsible for the international projects that we are running in the association. Uh, first of all, I would um, want to thank uh, that we can could be partner in this project. It was in, of vital importance of us uh, because it's uh, an issue that uh, we are working actively with as a, one of the main actors as an NGO in our country, Bulgaria, um, talking about inclusive education. And also we are one of the initiators of the law of inclusive education that was uh, passed uh, like uh, three, four years ago in 2016. Uh, we are very proud of this because we were one of the main forces that pushed uh, forward about this. And now it is an, a reality and we are on this transitional period where we include all the students with the special educational needs and disabilities in the conventional mainstream schools. It's not an easy process, but we are going on this path. So. Uh, this project was really an added value for us. Uh, now going straight to the conduction and delivering of the trainings. Um, first of all, I would like to say that they, these two trainings that we conducted in the end of October, beginning of November, they were like a continuation after another pilot training uh, that we did <clears throat> last uh, October 2019, where the, the drafts of the chapters uh, that the partners produced during the project um, were um, discussed, uh, some comments and the corrections were did on them, and then we proceeded to the um, final piloting phase, which was uh, this in the end of October, beginning of November this year. We are very happy that we were the only partner out of all of the consortium that we managed to do these face-to-face uh, -face sessions um, in these um, periods of insecurity, you know, about the um, pandemic situation. And we were literally catching the last train about this and we were very happy that um, in the end, we managed to provide this live contact before, uh, between the trainers and, um, uh, and the participants uh, themselves. Um, about the procedure of selecting candidates. Uh, it was surprisingly big interest uh, of, of um, uh, people to take part in these uh, training sessions. But unfortunately, due to safety reasons, we didn't manage to include um, all of them. So we rejected some of them, but we found some way to inform uh, what was going on during the trainings, the rest of the people who didn't manage to take part. 
uh, 32 participants uh, were involved um, uh, in two training groups. Um, what else I can add about the conduction? Um, the groups were very carefully selected. Um, um, having in mind this uh, initial requirement that we should have um, these uh, balanced groups of uh, representatives from parents, uh, kids with uh, dis um, students with disabilities, and children with disabilities, and then um, on the other hand, the specialists, uh, resource specialists, teachers, uh, pedagogical staff working with them, and of course the um, educational authorities and regional educational uh, inspectorate representatives, uh, which also were part of the, the participants. Um, um, an interesting uh, fact about the, um, the selection procedure was that some of the teachers contacted me asking if they will receive a credits for participating in these uh, trainings, which is part of the Bulgarian system that when you receive this um, special credits for qualification, when you attend some kind of training, of course, we explain to them that it's a European project and the added value is for them themselves. And happily enough for us, um, uh, they didn't, uh, most of them, they had inner intrinsic um, motivation and they were very active during the training. So this was not a problem. And in the end of the, the trainings, they received a certificate specially produced by us, which were for attending the, the trainings. So more or less, this is about the, how yeah. it was in Bulgaria. Uh, Polly, may I add something? Of course. <laughs> what you said um, it's about the last thing uh, Polly said about these credits um, I think that um, this is highlighting a very important process in the development of our educational system here in Bulgaria and maybe not only here um, and it comes to show us that it is not enough to have a law that is supporting the values of inclusion but we have to create spaces where personal attitudes can move towards um, these values. Such space, I think, was created during our pilot trainings. So um, that's why I'm also very happy that I was part of this project. Okay. Yes, thank you very much for your explanation. Are you, sorry, Paulina, were you about to say something or? Yeah, uh, maybe to continue uh, on the next question. Uh, I think um, if, if it's okay with you, perhaps we could have the experience of uh, Portugal first and okay. then go to the next question. So we can have all the answers. <laughs> okay. So I can start. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Vanessa. I'm a psychologist and I've been, uh, been a, a trainer in this project. And we had some problems to manage the, the, the apply the to apply the training in face to face. So uh, <laughs> we had that problem. Vanessa, so just one thing: we did our first training session no, uh, last our year. Our pilot, yes. Our pilot. We also yes, did our face to face. Our, yes, last year uh, uh, in December. December. Mm -hmm. I think, but this this training that was the the pilot training, but this one um, it was online, and we had so many issues to to can manage and and to apply this training. So we had twelve participants. Most of all were um, help me, Ruth. They are. Teachers, were teachers and speech psychologists. language and therapists. Not so much teachers because um, we had the same problem as Bulgaria had credits for teachers, and we don't also <laughs> manage we, that. This time we have um, some fam families, some parents. Some parents, yes. So for us it's uh, very important. Yeah, uh, but to tell you also that in Portugal, fortunately, we have. Uh, uh, policy that uh, protects the, the children, the students with the special um, needs. So we have, in fact, all the children, all the students in regular school. So yeah. this training, it's um, a lot of uh, what we do at, or, or as, uh, what we are doing in the last uh, maybe 12 years. Mm -hmm. So 
probably for that reason we don't we didn't uh, have so many people as we we expected okay thank you very much i don't know if Ruth, you have anything to add or if it's all okay to reflect on what just vanessa, vanessa said uh, i was expecting also because of the recent insecurity situations, not so many people to be active, but they were in desperate need, you know, the teachers, especially the specialists to see each other, to discuss. And even more when you have these representatives from the authorities, from the institutions, they were very happy to see each other and to talk alive. Of course, we had all the measures according to the situation. They were two meters ahead from each other. And uh, you can see pictures on the ESTD site and our website, uh, how it went. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so this definitely shows that training were better when it was in person rather than online then. Totally, yeah. Okay, then perhaps uh, now we can go to the second question. Uh, I think if you have any questions for the participants, you can ask them in the chat. And because we're not so many in this uh, group, perhaps we can have after uh, questions in like you can ask your questions in, in person and have a discussion rather than me reading all the questions, if it's okay with everyone. So um, now I will go to the second question. It was, how did you work together with the other stakeholders in the project? Paulina, I think you're, you're muted, sorry. <laughs> Uh, the collaboration between the, all the participants well, perfect, uh, went perfectly well in our situation, in the, two, in the two groups. Um, the chapters themselves, they were presented by our trainer, Petya, uh, in a very creative, interactive way, um, role play, play games, interactive um, simulations, uh, also brainstormings and different uh, proactive um, activities were included. Um, so the, the, the participants were really included. Some very um, interesting and uh, let's say even provocative discussions between the policymakers and educational representatives and the, the teachers from the other side, the principles occurred and um, the um, findings and conclusions were very uh, interesting, which Petya will reflect on, uh, will later reflect on for content wise um, directly for the different uh, chapters. Um, what I can add more is that uh, maybe more active were the people with disabilities and the teachers telling their stories from their practice, being passionate about this, uh, you know how it is in uh, with them. Um, then what uh, we received as a feedback that uh, it's a very useful and uh, for, with a big value to them that um, they really can sit on one table uh, all together as a partners in this mutual process because you know generally there is a difference it's a bureaucratic uh, obstacles and it's not uh, very often that they have such meetings where they can they can sit on one table all together um, another thing is maybe that um, uh, some of the participants shared that they have never been on a such informative and um, comprehensively uh, given information about the funding, how the inclusive education is funded in details. We had this session, I think the, the fifth chapter of our training program is about the funding of inclusive education. And for all the specialists, it was really not very clear or from here and there, they knew some information and now it was comprehensively given to them all the details they asked a lot of questions and now it's more clear to them how it is uh, organized um, another interesting thing in the end of the day it um, one of the principles of uh, sofia schools got really inspired by all the discussions and talks between each other so that he got inspired to take part in our campaign we learn together and um, happily for us, uh, the, the school was the winner of this uh, contest. Even I can see him here. Maybe he can mention something uh, about this and share some experience if he wants to from the trainings, Konstantin. Yes, of course, would be happy to hear. Here, yes. <laughs> Uh, do we hear him? 
I see uh, Constantin is... Yeah, so he was part of the first group of the, of the trainings, so very active, participating in the simulation games. And he said, I have a very nice idea about this dream classroom with some of our classes, we can take part. Uh, so they participated and they're the winners of the contest. Maybe later on he can... Yes, the participation was very interesting. Um, so, yeah, uh, perhaps later or... Uh, I see you're unmuted. Okay. <laughs> Still we can't hear. Perhaps uh, later or otherwise in the chat. I don't know if you find a way to communicate. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Um, we'll try to give you the floor later on. Okay. Uh, so this is more or less the feedback about how it worked between the participants. Uh, it was smooth process with a lot of discussions. So maybe Peter can tell more about content-wise, about the outcomes, the conclusions, the feedbacks from the different. Mm. Yeah, it sounds like the trainings were very successful and you achieved uh, great things all together. Perhaps, uh, perhaps first we can go to Portugal, see how it went, and then uh, for the content after, to come, so we can really have a comparison between the countries. Uh, Vanessa, if you want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I was thinking about this because uh, I think Miguel will be the, the better one to explain how difficult it was to 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 deal with the, the co-production and the co-delivery thing. <laughs> Yes. Oh, um, sorry, I had, I had muted again. Uh, because we have a big issue with that, right? To to the co-production and to involve the the policymakers and um, also some directors of the schools, right? Yeah, it it, it is a challenge, a challenge for us because. Uh, uh, we have a very centralized system in, in, in Portugal, so we have we all, only have one ministry of education. We don't have any regional uh, autonomy level uh, or uh, some and the municipal level. Their 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 reach is is, is very limited, um, and it's a very centralized system. Uh, and it, it we 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 invited them. We invited them, of course, to to to, to be part. Uh, they're involved in well in in all this uh, how to manage the the COVID situation in 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 schools, and it was not identified as a as a priority. Uh, uh, we we had some 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 uh, even the technical teams uh, of the ministries and and uh, secretaries of state. Uh, reached out and, and explained uh, that they, they, it was a very interesting theme and they would like to, to receive our findings. So they, they wanted to have the documents. They, 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 however, uh, to, to participate in the discussion, especially because they were parents and, uh, and the ministry have, have some difficulties uh, speaking directly with parents. So there, there's there's um, there's some some work to be done at, at that level because uh, uh, they uh, I, I it's my opinion uh, that uh, the, the ministry feels a bit exposed to to what parents might say and uh, and the the criticism and the critics are 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 are, are very intense. Um, because in, in Portugal, the process of, of um, inclusion was by law. Yeah. By law, it was implemented this way, that in three years, you have to shut down all special schools and independently, if the school is ready or not to receive children, it's, and, the, the and process it, it, is done. Yes, so we, it, have, it, we have some some schools that may... may uh, May find this as a as an opportunity. Most of them felt they, well. It, it is compelling by law that we have to accept them, uh, but we 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 will find a, a different place for them to stay. So this was was uh, was was felt by parents as an obligation because parents in Portugal 
they cannot decide. They cannot decide between a mainstream public school and a, a, a special school. It is not in their power to decide what system they would like to, to enroll their children. So we, uh, some, even, some experiments were not that great. Yeah, Miguel, and just to say, and even if uh, it is, it's not a, a school decision also, if the, this student goes to a, to a special school or a regular school, sometimes yeah. it happens, uh, but it's not a, a decision from the school or from the parents. So this, the decision is very centralized in the ministry. Uh, and um, uh, it, it uh, for example, some 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 schools uh, when when they when the children enrolled in their schools, they invited parents. These were for um, um, highly disabled uh, children that needed uh, diapers to to be changed, uh, needed uh, so so in very much intensive care uh, that the school uh, uh, communicated to parents that they couldn't assume this role and the parents should should go to school and to to provide this kind of service for their own children so uh, it, it was uh, rough times in the in the so many critics uh, around around the system parents fe feel like they have no support and schools uh, feel they do not have any resources to 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 deal with uh, the arrival of it was it was not a, 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 a gradual arrival when school in one year had no children with disability this was a small uh, local school and the the year next they would arrive 30 children with with uh, with highly uh, with high uh, needs, high demand needs, yeah. and it was very fast and because the, the the we had a special school with around 120 students. And Miguel, Miguel, sorry, and we're talking about all the students and all the special needs, not just the the, the dyslexia thing or no, all the the the, the big issues about the special needs. Yeah. So we, we still we still are dealing with this. Uh, parents are are, are well uh, engaging in the movement of, of of questioning the system. Uh, of course, they 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 like the idea of of uh, inclusion in in mainstream public schools. However, they lack the resources and they feel completely um, not covered uh, or not safe. Uh, at, at this level, a, a safety that was provided by uh, special schools. So th this is the kind of, of, of communication between parents and the ministry. That's why when they're parents, the ministry is not there. And when the ministry, well, you, 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 you'll see. During our discussions in the beginning, it was a little bit, you know, they were um, frustrated, wanted to jump on the representatives from the regional uh, ministry, regional Sophia education and representatives, but this discussion went milder. They tried to, to talk to a part, but in the beginning, it was a little bit frustrating between the, how the, the teachers and the principals on one hand, and on the other hand, the, the parents with the teachers to the ministry representatives. It's a bit of a stref stressful environment. <laughs> it's a stressful. It's a. It's a. It is. It is. A, 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 each of uh, each of the party with the with their own agenda, and it's 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 uh, it's difficult to ca find common ground and reasonable and reasonable uh, participation and reasonable communication. It's it's, it's this kind of, of level. Yeah. We're on the right way with. You, are, you have no sound, Paulina. <laughs> I don't know why I mute, but yeah. So we are on the right path with this new laws that we adopted in our countries. I can hear that it's similar, and we know this in Portugal and Bulgaria with the new laws of uh, inclusive education. So we are on the right way. Uh, I just wanted to say that here in Bulgaria, it's the opposite. The 
parents are the people who are deciding where the child will go to study. And it's not a better decision because it's again, not all the participants deciding together, but it's one yeah. of them. So it's again, not a better way to do it. It's the, yeah, I know, I know, I know. But the, uh, the, the, the UN convention states that it's the, the parent's decision the parents and 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 uh, and and the child so uh we should give them that, that that power and we have to prove them that the the inclusive education is the right system is the right environment for their child to to grow as an individual and it's like uh tete like the the, the kid that was there in in uh, in, uh, in in that uh, in that school that is training is is training how to ask for help is training how to engage with others with their peers because it's their that kind of skills that that he has to engage when he leaves school in in a in a public transport if he doesn't know what which bus it is he has to ask it, it, it's the, the the support is not provided in an automatic uh, way so these social skills are what is really uh, needed to to be uh, an active citizen uh, an adult that sometimes needs help needs support and uh, and when i see we when we had the the, the special schools the support was provided you know it's there the support the therapists everything was provided even if the the the, the child or the parents uh didn't request it. it it was it was provided this way so this uh this this kind of environment we have to prove to parents that in the long term in the long term maybe it's not the safest environment maybe it's not what it's not what guarantees the the support uh, in in the long term or uh, the um, the times the schedule because we have also that that problem because um, the the schedule the the, the the how do you say the 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 school year the school year is different from a special school to a public school usually a special school has only one month. Of, 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 of stopping their activities. Public school has three months. So if, if, I, if I'm a parent, which, which kind of environment do I prefer that supports me the best? However, I have to think about this in the long term. And in the long term, for me, the, the inclusive education provides the, the, the better support and, and it really trains you in the to be an autonomous, autonomous person. Yeah, and to be part of the society, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Miguel. Um, I see the time is flying, so I don't know if, uh, Paulina, you want to add something uh, or Petya on, on the co-production part on your side, or if you would rather go into the outcomes of the training. Um, but just before we go to, to you again, Paulina, I see that Constantine has now managed to join, so perhaps he could uh, um, speak of the contest and the training. Great. Constantine, if you manage. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me now? Hello. Yes. <laughs> yes, finally. Sorry about that, but with uh, all the uh, laptops, cameras, etc., it's a little bit crazy nowadays. Unfortunately, this is our new reality. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Paulina and Nart for the uh, possibility to take participation in these uh, sessions and seminars that we had in Bulgaria. They were really fruitful for us. Uh, I don't know how much you are uh, familiar with uh, the school I'm presenting, but uh, it's a mainstream school and we have more than 60 students with special educational needs. Uh, we have Down syndromes, we have, we have autism, etc., with uh, learning difficulties also. Uh, so a very big number of them uh, we are um, educating. 
Uh, during the seminars, as I said, they were very fruitful for us because uh, we got the chance to keep in touch with some of the things that happen in Western Europe and to see whether our clock uh, runs the right way. Um, we took participation in the contest for inclusive edu uh, educational room. We won. Thank, for, thank you for that. Uh, it's a really nice thing that we could, uh, we had the possibility to the chance to participate in it and to show that we also do some stuff uh, and that these stuff, uh, the right stuff that we are trying to do. And for the last, just to tell you that uh, it's very hard sometimes because as I heard the discussion, uh, for us, uh, the, 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 the parents probably are one of the biggest problems here because sometimes they feel that they should do something, but they don't know how to do it. They are not very informed about the ways they can do it. And sometimes they take, uh, let's say, wrong decisions. And we are trying with the specialists, we are trying to uh, explain the possibilities and how we could be in favor of their children. Thank okay. you very much, Constantine. What I, want to, what I want to add is that Constantine School, uh, he is a principal, deputy principal of the school, is one of the best examples in Sofia for really a school um, which is uh, which is implementing the inclusion uh, policies. It is very good uh, organized uh, physical environment together with the attitude and the specialists working there. Some of the other teachers from uh, teachers and representatives and specialists from other schools were really impressed how the process is already working in their school which is about to be achieved by the rest of the schools throughout the country for for our school uh, we have one of the biggest teams in i can say in bulgaria i'm not quite sure about the whole bulgaria but for sure in sofia we are uh, the school with the biggest team uh, that work with uh, children with special educational needs we have uh, four yeah for uh, special teachers, uh, we have two uh, psychologists, we have two um, speech uh, therapists, we have uh, one uh, educational advisor also, uh, and me <laughs> as, a, as a deputy headmaster. So uh, we are trying to do our best and we really think that it works the proper way for now. Thank you very much. Um, sorry, can I say something? Because because I was listening and and uh, I'm thinking about um, something that that our participants told us at the training about the the, the few resources that uh, always uh, we have have at schools, like a few teachers and uh, no money. And I was listening and about four teachers. Well. Uh, in in our in Portugal, maybe for teachers for just one school, uh, right, Miguel? We have more <laughs> enough resources for the schools. In fact, in Portugal, maybe. Yeah, sometimes it's not it's not a, a question of, of, of more resources. Yeah. It, it's what 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 is how they are channeled, how they are how they are. If 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 I if I give. Sometimes having too much resources uh, prevents uh, free connection and free cooperation between students. Uh, if, if I have a person that is hired to support one child for the whole school year, it's a child that usually does not connect with other students because he has an adult standing right next to him and providing everything and making sure that he's safe at every time of, 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 of so there's no free time there's no free time for free interactions and sometimes too much resources are damaging for the for the for the learning process and and free interactions between students and because um, i would hate as a student I would hate to have a, a, a grown up, a, a, a man or a woman standing right next to me when I'm re in recess. I don't want that. I, I want to, to be free to, to explore. And sometimes too much resources 
is damaging for the for the education process. Thank you, Miguel. <laughs> it's true indeed, no one liked this. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wouldn't really like it. We have to project it to, to ourselves also. Uh, as a kid, would I like to have a, an adult following me everywhere like a shadow? Uh, no, no, it's not a pleasant idea. So it's, why, why should we make this to, to, to others? Hmm. Perhaps um, I don't know if uh, you want to add anything also about the co-production of the or the training, but I know uh, Petra, you wanted to mention the outcomes. As I see, time is flying. Perhaps we can go to the outcomes and then uh, go back if we want to add something after. Yeah, maybe just about the co-production, just a sentence. Yes, 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 of course. I think the process of co-production was central for the project and um, it is the same process that we have by the creation of our educational system. So I think we have to keep in our mind that we are all involved in that process and that uh, we are all authors of our educational system. So I think this is something very important um uh, so to go to the outcomes uh well there's so much things to be said um but maybe the most important thing that i want to underline is that uh, we all the different participants in the school school communities and in the field of inclusive education uh, we need, I think, more space like this in these pilot trainings and more time like this. Um, and in such encounters uh, where we can meet our prejudices, our difficulties, our successes, and to move to more inclusive attitudes are needed. So I believe the authorities are open for constructive conversation in Bulgaria and they're open to hear the needs and the problems that people with special needs have and their families also. Um, so I think we're on the right way, but we need more time, more space to be together, to think, to share with each other what is happening with us. Because like Miguel said, uh, uh, or Vanessa, um, in Portuguese, in Bulgaria is the same. The law is very new and we are just adapting to this law. And some of our attitudes are still away back and we have to, each of us have to make his or her own steps um, so we can really reach these inclusive attitudes and really work together in this direction. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, well, it's interesting to see um, that um, the trainings worked very well and that uh, everyone agreed the fact that you need more spaces like those. So I hope it's the case also in Portugal. Perhaps we can hear the discussion in Portugal. Yes, I, I, I would like to say also that um, we are here in, at the training also this, in the, all the, in the, during the, the project uh, discussing all the, the adult, adult um, opinions and we should listen also the, the children, the, the, the colleagues of the students with special needs because they are the first ones who, who made inclusion. So we should look at them, should, at the, should look at the, the, the regular classes and look how the children um, uh, talk with each other and, uh, and uh, uh, linked with each other. And that was one of our conclusions during our training. Thank you, Vanessa. Perhaps you have also uh, a few words about the co-production? Or I don't know if you want to add anything 
Otherwise, we can perhaps go to the questions. We can move forward. <laughs> okay. So I don't see any questions in the chat, but perhaps some participants would like to raise their hand or ask something, or perhaps you even uh, between speakers have questions for each other. <laughs> I don't see anything now. <laughs> Okay, well, still no questions. Ah, Petya, <laughs> thanks, you're saving me. Ah, yeah, I have a, a question, question to Miguel and Vanessa, because it was something that we were thinking about and that we noticed during our pilot trainings, and not only during the pilot training, but also in our whole experience in the field of inclusive education. And I was wondering if it is the same by you um it's about that um we we have we had some parents of children without special educational needs in our trainings and they were sharing that they have sometimes the feeling that the teachers are only looking for the children with special educational needs and their children are left behind and the teachers also said yes actually sometimes this happens because we feel very maybe unprepared for what is happening to us and, and uh, um, we put a lot of energy into reaching the children with special educational needs and the others we just sometimes forgot about them um, I was wondering if you have uh, some similar experience by you. We, we have similar experience, yes. Uh, parents associations, sometimes they, 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 they address the school director and uh, question the amount. It's the question of not, it's the amount of children with, 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 with disabilities, with special needs that are a, a, in school. And they feel that sometimes their children are left behind it's uh, it's uh, something that is um, strengthened by 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 teachers i think uh, teachers address parents in their um, uh, their, their classroom uh, meetings with parents and and intentionally or not intentionally they share this kind of of um, of, of a feeling they, they they share it to parents that uh, they 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 usually they when they address parents they say oh the classroom is doing great and that. however and then however there is a um, little john that is has down syndrome and he needs more support so sometimes i'm not i'm not with your your uh, children because i'm supporting only uh, little John and little John demands a lot of attention and and th this starts to 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 shift the the the, the attention of, of, of other parents and I think it's it's I, I I'm not sure if it is intentional but I've, I've witnessed this um, and and parents start to shift their 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 um, their view on on inclusive education sometimes when when it it, it, it is shared like this um, however we have a, a strong a strong uh, argument that when when you have uh, more than two, two children uh, with, with special needs in a classroom that classroom is reduced by the number of students so in one side they want to have their children with less uh, we, instead of 30 students in a classroom, they have only 20. Mm -hmm. However, they do not want that two, two children that reduce the classroom in their classroom. So it's it's you you you, you can't have both ways. So it it, it, it is positive for, for them to 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 have uh, 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 students with disability in 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 the classroom. 
However, um, it is it is shared by parents like this. Uh, it, it is not the, our main concern. It is not the the the, the big issue here. No, we we have some 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 uh, some reports around this, but it's not in every school. It's not an uh, uh, or a national movement. It's something that that we can pinpoint okay you have the situation here and there and some pressures um but it's not the main uh, no it's not the main concern but it's a concern it is a concern yes uh and is this something uh, that is written in your law that uh, if there is a child with special educational needs or two children in a class the class will be reduced exactly Oh, this is something very nice, I think, that, uh, yeah. You, because uh, uh, we have this almost like this ratio of, of one child with, with special needs. Uh, it, usually it fills the, the role of four other children. So, mm. you know. Yeah, it makes sense. And uh, yes, it's very nice because here in Bulgaria, we, we don't have this. Uh, the class is 30 children and no matter if there are two or five children with special educational needs, so... Mm, it's, a, it's a very strong point for us to... to when, when we're speaking with, with teachers, explaining them to that that is the reason why they have a, a reduced classroom. Mm -hmm. the, the little John is the reason. So you have also to concern with them. You, you cannot pressure or partners or pressure the school for little John to be left aside or, or be part of another group that is not in um, in, in the in the classroom so uh, it's it's a strong point that we have that we use that uh, uh, supports for me it's a it's, it's, it's a good argument that stays yes. okay but if, if you do not allow little John to be in your classroom then maybe you have to accept eight other children you know because it's definitely something interesting. Oh, sorry, Vanessa, I cut to you. You wanted to say something. I just see that we have only three minutes left. And I want to make sure that you saw the link Hilaria posted in the chat for the next uh, uh, next panel on policy. But of course, go on, Vanessa. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> I, I just want to say about what Miguel said, uh, the eight other children with other issues, other problems. And <laughs> so, Okay, maybe want, that one or two are enough. I wanted to ask maybe Miguel, because talking about this topic um, in Bulgaria since one or two years, we have this special um, profession of the support teacher. We are not reducing the classes, but we help the mainstream teacher, the conventional teacher with some additional teacher who helps uh, with all the kids. It's individual approach. It might be uh, a kid with light on and moderate learning disability or just a regular kid. Uh, talking about this, uh, every kid in a way of the educational system has its learning de uh, uh, learning deficits and learning, um, not deficits, but um, learning uh, problems throughout, no matter if it's uh, autist or yeah, any kind of problem. Yeah. So we have this support teacher a role and it's more and more popular and uh, principals with uh, some of the principals use this to hire such uh, teachers to help instead of reducing maybe the classes we also have this besides reducing classroom we have an additional teacher in the in the class there we have that possibility if, if, Do you if, use if, it? Is, if, it, is it popular sorry is it popular it is not used for me the, the correct way. The, the, how to share the classroom between two teachers is not done. Also, or uh, we had this about two years, three years ago, and now schools are are giving up. This even the teacher said, "Oh, sharing sharing my classroom with with another teacher." It's it's uh, so uh, uh, we have this kind of, of, of uh, it it is it is a sort of management management of the classroom. That is being that needs to be to be first addressed between the two teachers and say, okay, which kind of, of, of dynamics we will create in these two classrooms, and and should we share the classroom? Should we divide the classroom into groups? And one teacher is in in another group. Am I supporting only a, a small group of children while other? So this must be decided. 
and we uh, schools are not are not using these additional resources as 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 beneficial as 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 I I, I foreseen at first. So um, it, it is not going very well. Mm -hmm. We had the feedbacks, uh, different feedbacks for a very good collaboration between the teachers and on the other hand, some teachers being proud. I don't want this person to yeah. interfere in my they're work. Not used. Like yeah. this. It is something new. Yeah, they're not used to share. They're, they're, they're used to be the, the, the king of the classroom, you know? And, I, and I, please, and please do not look for my work. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we, are, we, are, we are leaving the, the session, no? Hello. Yeah, it's uh, it's already past the time, so it's starting. The other okay. uh, discussion is starting. I'm sorry, I have to stop this discussion, but I hope uh, if you have any other questions, we can continue this discussion another way because it was very interesting, and I want to thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, well, those who listened and those who spoke, it was very interesting. So. Thank you very much. Ilaria has uh, sent the link for the policy panel at another time. So please click on it and join and, and don't hesitate to ask your other questions also. Thank, Thank you very much for facilitating. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much for everything. Okay, I will.